17th century England was one of the most important times and places in intellectual history. A turning point in the history of ideas. 17th century England was home to the scientific revolution characterized by the thoughts of Bacon and Newton. 17th century England is where the Enlightenment has its roots. The Enlightenment, a period of intellectual history which begins in the late 17th century and endures across the 18th century. And no figure stands so clearly at the beginning of Enlightenment than a man called Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes is such an exciting writer because his book Leviathan changes the course of how we understand politics. He used methods from physical sciences to understand human beings. Things like his idea of state of nature, social contract, his negative outlook towards human beings and his idea of church led to burning of his book twice. This video will throw some light on his philosophy in his most important text, Deviate. Hi, myself Rajat Mathur. I am a third year student of political science in Ram Rohan Jhumiwala College, University of Mumbai. Life and Influence of Hobbes Thomas Hobbes was born in a family of an Anglican clergyman in the year 1588. He had a long life of 92 years. Thus, he covered one of the most turbulent periods of English history. At the age of 15, he went to Oxford for higher education and after completing his education, he was appointed as tutor to the eldest son of Lord William Cavendish and he maintained this connection for a lifetime. Due to this relation, he got chance to travel as well as meet great minds like Galileo. He also witnessed civil war in England between supporters of monarchy and republicanism. This civil war convinced him that man is an animal, motivated by two things, fear and self-interest. Also, he was now clear that to have a civilized life, a strong and stable government was the basic need. Since he has witnessed his anarchy, he flew to France. Thomas Hobbes wrote three books during this time. The first two books were dedicated to physics and philosophy respectively. And the third book was dedicated to the science of politics called Leviathan in the year 1651. This work of Thomas Hobbes was praised by everyone and he got famous overnight. But some of his ideas were not accepted and he was expelled from France. He came back to England where he took his last breath. In his book Leviathan, he develops a new science of human beings, which he hopes will be the basis of new approach to politics. As he was influenced by Galileo, he uses his idea and gave a scientific analysis about the basic forces that motivate human behavior. As a materialist, he drawn a conclusion that human behavior can be termed as various types of motion within the body. Motion continues as long as we are alive. And this motion is according to the external situation. He compares men as a machine and completely discards the medieval theory based on Aristotle's theory of hierarchical world order by the God. Hobbes says that fear is the most important trait of human beings. He wrote in his biography that My mother gave birth to twins, myself and fear. Due to this fear of man, he is in continuous restlessness. Hence, self-preservation becomes the necessity.
Thomas Hobbes says that all men are born with two powerful instincts, feeling of desire and aversion. This feeling in Hobbes language are the driving force of human behavior. Desire to achieve something creates a liking for it and dislike for some things create aversions. He further adds that all men are born equal in body and mind. Even the weakest can kill the strongest. Is there a disparity in talent among mankind? And his answer is no. Both in our mind and our body, there's a great amount of equality. We all think ourselves capable of certain things. Here's a little difference between Hobbes' approach to the subject of human nature and the one given to us by Machiavelli. Machiavelli would talk of great men and then he would talk of the people. He would talk of princes and people. He would say, princes want to rule over people. People just want to be led. But here Hobbes consolidates all of mankind into one grouping. We as human beings want the same thing. Now, does that produce a good account? And the answer is no. That produces instead a war of all against all. According to Hobbes, this basic equality among men is the reason for human misery. Hobbes says when two individuals desire and hope for something which they cannot obtain simultaneously, they become enemies of each other and seek to destroy each other. According to him, this prime element of desire for power and glory is the reason for warfare among each other. Hobbes' view on state of nature Hobbes argues that if man's selfishness and quarrelsome nature remains uncontrolled, then there is war of every man against every other man. Due to this instinct of man, there is first envy, then hatred and finally war. As all men are born equal, this war will bring no result. Hence, men live in constant fear and in state of war. Hence, Hobbes sums up this by quoting, Man's life in state of nature is solitary poor, nasty, brutish, and shock. Due to this fear of no safety and security, self-preservation becomes the sole aim of his life. Man survives to protect himself, and thus, in state of nature, there is no place for right or wrong. The only law prevails is might is right. To have security and safety, Man thinks about establishing peace by submitting all his powers except self-preservation to the common authority, namely state or government. Hence, Hobbes says, Governments are products of a contract among individuals in the society. It is a social contract. Describes the state of nature or the natural state in terms of fundamental human nature, nasty, brutish and selfish, and self-interest dominates. But what will happen if self-interest dominates? If every human being is solely concerned about his or her self-interest, this can lead to certain consequences. So he says that there is a concern, there is a deeper concern and, and more important concern for self-preservation. This demand us to avoid the basic natural state and to arrive at what he calls the establishment of civil society. If man was peaceful, there was no need for central power. One of the purpose to establish central authority is to punish offenders and to reward the innocent. This social contract is among people and not between the government and the people. Regarding social contract, Thomas Hobbes says that the parties in this social contract are individuals and not groups and the sovereign is the outcome of this social contract and hence he is above all of them. In this way, Hobbes justified despotic rule 
and denies every right to individual. As sovereign is this powerful, people obey it out of fear of punishment and not on rational base. The efficiency of the law depends on power of the state to enforce it. As Hobbes himself said, Covenants without swords are nothing but words. And sowing is the product of the social contract with the individuals, he has no chains of justice binding him. And due to this, the individuals cannot revoke the contract which they have concluded with the sovereign. And if it is done so, then the state of anarchy and confusion will be gone. Apart from division between sovereign and individual, there is further division as majority and minority among the individuals. The minority has to accept the choice of the majority. And if they refrain, they remain outside of commonwealth. The individuals submitted all their rights for protection. And due to this, this social contract is sometimes termed as the bond of slavery. But the sole right of self-preservation still remains with them. Which means an individual can use his right of self-preservation when his existence is threatened by sovereign. Hobbes gave absolute power to the sovereign, who has right to rule over people. According to Hobbes, he is the chief element of the state. The sovereign has right to rule, right to make laws, maintain peace and security, and to promote welfare of the people. The sovereign is not bound by opinions and wishes of the people. He is also constituted above the natural law by Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes also says that the sovereign is a distinction between good and bad, which did not exist in state of nature. The sovereign knows what is right and what is wrong, what is moral, what is immoral and will take decisions accordingly. Hobbes also gives sovereign all sorts of power of executive, legislative, judiciary. Thus, he discarded the theory of separation of powers. In short, Hobbes created an absolute, indivisible and inalienable sovereign. This Hobbes theory met several criticisms. As the sovereign was given undisputed power, this theory was criticized saying that it is unreal to have a sovereign with such vast powers that the Hobbes has given. The next critique, Vaughan rejects this theory by stating it as destructive and impossible. Another critic, Professor Jones, says that in absolute sovereignty, there should be no right to individuals. It is against the doctrine of absolute sovereignty. The another great philosopher, Jean Jacques Rousseau, describes Hobbes' theory of sovereignty as both self-contradictory and revolting. He argues that the gifts of nature like life and liberty can never be renounced for any supposed benefit. A person who renounces his freedom, in fact, renounces his man, and such renunciation is inconsistent with man's nature. Apart from the criticisms, Hobbes has contributed a lot to the modern political thought. Thomas Hobbes is credited to offer the theory of absolute sovereignty and made sovereign free from all shackles. He conceived state as a human institution and said that state was merely a means for promotion of interest of the individuals and hence he discarded the theory of divine rights of the king. During Hobbes' time, there was scientific reform which affected Hobbes' theory. He applied true science to the study of political science. Also, he made a rational separation between ethics and politics. 
he also discarded the doctrine of law of nature. According to him, man-made law can be effective in human affairs. Thomas Hobbes makes a great contribution to the political understanding of the modern state. Also, he starts a long tradition of the social contract theory which is incredibly influential in the political philosophy. That's it from my side. I hope you like my video. Thank you for your patience listening.